Hello and welcome to the 11 Steps to Serious Joy audio lecture series. I'm your heartfelt host and your sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. Welcome back, my friend. This is episode 7, titled Step 5, I Think. Episode by episode, I am helping you climb the steps of human consciousness. In our last episode, I introduced you to Step 4, I Belong. This is the consciousness responsible for the law of attraction and what I affectionately call the royal instigator inside of us, or also the royal pain in the ass. It's the part of us that's always causing trouble, either by pointing us where we don't belong or pointing us where we do belong, which makes us face the rest of us and have to grow. The royal instigator is the innovator in you. It's the conscious map maker and it is the rebel with or without a cause. Today, may I introduce you to your step five consciousness, the royal court jester, also known as the royal smartass, your mind. But before we talk about that smartass, let's review how we got here. We began with step zero, the royal executioner, and this is step zero holding space for our new reality. Then we learned about step one, I love, which is the king or queen of your royal court, and your king or queen may be falling in love with something that he or she wants. Then in step two, we spoke about the inner royal baby getting excited and how the inner royal nanny had to support you to move forward with the wish. Then in step three, we brought in the royal scribe, who believes what fits into the royal story and what doesn't fit into the royal story, and really edits the story to move forward so the wish is believable. Then we move up to step four, the royal instigator. And this royal instigator proclaims, well, if his or her majesty believes in this or that, that means his or her majesty belongs here. And the instigator points to a map of the earth. And that's when the inner queen inside asks the question, where the hell is that you are pointing to? And as soon as the king or queen has a question, about what you have law of attracted, we are now at step five. The court jester is now taking over. Step five is, what do I think about all of this? Step five is the human mind. Remember how the steps unfold. As soon as you protect it, you can love it. As soon as you love it, you can feel it. Once you feel it, you can really believe it. Once you believe it, you know where it belongs. And once you discover where it belongs, you have a lot of questions, right? That's step five, the mind. The mind is the first response to any world response. Anything we are creating or anything that approaches our being, it is the mind that responds to this. This is, of course, our royal court jester or our royal smartass. The mind is always trying to show how smart we are. The mind is always playing tricks on us. The mind is always taunting us with the other way of looking at it almost like the masks of Drama Club from Happy to Sad. And most of all, the mind plays games to distract us from the truth. That's why he or she is the court jester, always playing games with the king or queen. Now, step five is ruled by the planet Mercury, which is the second fastest planet after the moon. So thoughts and intellectual energy moves very fast. Step five is also attuned to the astrological sign of Gemini. Every Gemini on Earth is attuned to step five, and they prefer, if you ask them, that they prefer to live in their mind. I know this very personally because my personal son is a Gemini. I've raised him, and I can totally attest that he loves playing games, even Scrabble and board games. He loves to communicate, he loves to share ideas, and he even loves to worry, one of the traps of the mind. And my son loves anything that will distract him from doing his homework. These are all typical actions of step five. Like all the states of awareness, your mind, the royal smartass, actually has a mind of its own. We call it the twins, the twins of the Gemini. One twin is intellectual, logical, and practical. The other twin is spiritual, psychic, creative, and intuitive. In fact, whether you realize it or not, your mind is continually juggling between psychic impressions and logical responses. 
Half the time that you, quote, get a good idea, it's actually your psychic intuitive side that has given you this good idea. The smart-ass logical side never thought for a second where the answer came from. The logical mind just takes it and runs. This psychic side and logical side is one of the way God Universe fuses spirit with organic life. So it allows us to unite our mind with our body and spirit. So the smart ass is really two voices that speak as one. And it's actually not just two voices, but the mind actually is a representative of all 11 voices inside of you. You could say that step five is a spiritual house of Congress. It stands between all the states of awareness, or it stands between all the characters of our inner royal court. As we climb the pyramid to the 11 steps to serious joy, notice step 5 is nearly halfway between step 0 and step 11. The mind is the state of awareness that exchanges information between the bottom steps, which is our inner royal court, step 0 through 4, and the top steps, steps 6 through 11, or our outer royal court. That means that your heart, or the king or queen, must go through the mind to get to the other side of the royal court, and vice versa. The mind is a filter the heart must go through to communicate to the rest of your entire being. The mind is the hub. This is how brainwashing can take over a person's life. If you get to take over their step five, what they think, you control all the steps above and below that mind position. This is also why modern media, government propaganda, and commercial television deliberately aims to distract you within step five, the mind. Modern manipulation aims to keep you arguing with yourself or with other people. Pharmaceuticals try to convince you that you have diseases of the mind, then they prescribe drugs that disconnect you from your own mind. So society has learned a long time ago, if you want to control the human race, the mind is a good place to go. So the mind is the state of awareness where the inner royal court actually meets to discuss what's going on with the outer royal court. This is your royal congress or your royal parliament, if you will. The court jester, which is the mind, is the master of ceremonies and hosts the entire congress of voices that each represent a part of your royal court. You can just think about this to see this for yourself. If your body hurts, step 11, your mind knows about it. If you feel sad, step 2, your mind knows about it. If you want to hit somebody because you're angry, step 9, ego, your mind also knows about that. And if you get the haunting sense that you've been here before and have deja vu, step 7, your mind also knows that. So the mind is always picking up on all the messages from all the states of awareness. And if you bring in our royal court of characters, it basically says that everybody on earth has multiple voices in their head talking. According to science, everybody on earth therefore has a multiple personality disorder. Everyone would be termed crazy. Everyone has many voices in their head, and these all lead to different parts of the royal court. Rarely is a thought from the mind alone. Now you may ask, well, if I have all these voices in my head, what's the voice of my mind? Good question. The voice of your mind is the one asking the question. The voice of your mind is the voice listening to the answer. So your mind is the part that asks questions and listens to answers. That is what the focus of Gemini is. And the reason why the mind is this big interviewer is because its job is to associate all the messages from all the different states of awareness and bring them to some sort of organization in order. So you could look at the court jester as a bit of an attorney. When your mind says, you look fat in those jeans, that's not really your mind that's saying it. That's the royal instigator, which is taunting your ego, a.k.a. the royal dumbass. So you basically have one state of awareness picking on another state of awareness. It's not really the mind that's instigating that, in my opinion. When your mind says, I feel scared, that's the royal baby complaining that the royal executioner is not doing his or her job to protect you. This is why Master Buddha and Buddhism teaches us to observe our mind, to listen to the chatter going on without reacting to it, to observe what voice the thought is coming from rather than immediately reacting to the voice. 
Remember, the mind itself has two voices, logical and intuitive, and it's always comparing and contrasting all the information. When the mind has a question, it may ask a question which brings more responses from the other states of awareness, and so on and so forth. The job of the mind is to make sense of all the data coming in. Now it's from observing your thoughts rather than pushing your thoughts, that's when you'll start to discover your psychic messages coming in. If a thought pops into your mind without any logical sequence, in other words, a thought you did not ask a question to, it's likely a psychic thought. Like I said earlier, your psychic voice, what we call the mind's eye or step seven, is the one answering most of the questions most of the time without people really noticing where it came from. So, Sensei, how does one manage that smart-ass mind of ours, the royal court jester? Well, there's only one opinion that counts most in the mind. Can you guess which royal court character that is? You guessed it, the king or queen, or your heart. Out of all the voices in your head, the heart's voice is number one, step one. The mind must take time out to ask the heart for the king or queen's opinion. That's the only way the mind will ever be settled about anything. It's the heart's jurisdiction to make those choices. So for instance, when you hear your voice say, you look fat in those jeans, instead of going into the argument in your mind, ask your heart, your king or queen, is that comment appropriate for his or her majesty's court? Are you really going to insult your heart with that lewd conversation? If you take the message to the heart, you might find that the heart is hurt, that the message actually hurts the king or queen. Your heart doesn't want to feel that. And this is when your royal executioner steps forward and you become defensive on the inside. But where does one defend the heart? In my opinion, it must come from the mind. The mind must be mindful of the heart. So if you say something lewd to the heart, it's almost like the king or queen has to say, Hey, smartass, you may not allow conversation in the royal mind that offends his majesty of the heart, or off with your head. Whenever your mind thinks something that hurts your heart, do not allow it to happen. Give yourself a get-out-of-jail-free card and move on to a new topic to think about. It's my experience that the mind usually enjoys thinking about something new and didn't want to think about that anyways either. So getting back to our 11 steps to serious joy, to manifest something in your life or manifest serious joy in your life, here are some step five guidelines. If a thought or dialogue in your head uh, is hurting your heart, it must be explored if it's appropriate or not. If it's new information, then you have to allow it in because you honestly don't want to close your mind off to new information, whether it hurts your heart or not. But if it's something you've already thought a thousand times, that information is no longer admissible in the royal court. If something from the past that hurts you comes up that you've already thought about a thousand times, this is not admissible in court. If something or someone else said something that hurts you, something that originated outside of you, that really shouldn't be admissible in court either. Now, a lot of times, the chatter and the arguing going on in the mind is actually a brilliant distraction or game devised to keep you away from your goals. People actually procrastinate moving on to step six just by keeping some argument going in their mind. I know many, many people caught up from moving forward in their life because the argument keeps going. They never ask the heart for the advice, and so the argument is never settled. Another device is inner chatter and inner dialogue is often a technique to ignore people's feelings. A lot of people don't know how to soothe their feelings or manage their feelings, so it's literally like they put their hands up to their ears and they're like, la, 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 and literally use the mind to drown out what they're feeling. I feel is step two, remember. So if we get to a bad feeling that hits step five, the smart ass will often distract the king or queen as a way of numbing up. So here is your step five manifest checklist. As long as the mind is unsettled, step five, manifestation will not move forward. If there are doubts in the mind, you will manifest those doubts into reality later on. If the mind ignores any of the royal characters, including the ones above it that we haven't gotten to yet in this series, there will be mishaps in your manifestations. 
To proceed to step six, your mind must be open and ready to receive the next step. So let's say you're manifesting a new house. Let's apply the steps leading up to step five so you have a nice review. Step zero, I protect. You take the time and space for your house and your new life. Step one, you imagine what you would love in your new house and begin to fall in love with some sort of creative vision. Step two, you can feel yourself in this dream house and in this creative vision. Step three, you believed it's possible to get the dream house. You now have no doubt that you deserve to be in a house like this. Step four, I belong. You find the house you think you like. Remember, I belong is when we get our first response from the universe. It's not step 11. Then comes in step five, I think. Now all the voices need to come in to discuss, is this the right house or not? When all the voices are heard and represented by the royal smartass, and you have accepted and received all of the needs necessary to open up, you may move to step six, I receive which is also known as the Royal Justice of the Peace. We'll talk about the justice in our next episode. So that is where I think I need to leave you for now, I think. I think this has been a great presentation of Step 5, but then again, my smartass also thinks there's more to learn. <laughs> so until next time, my friend, thank you for listening to this audio lecture series. I'll see you next time. I love you, and live, love, be. Live, love, be.